In this video, I'll be getting into the details of Robinhood's upcoming initial public offering, the controversy around Robinhood, and whether or not I'll be investing in this IPO. Let's get into it. My name is Christian, welcome to my channel. My passion is personal finance and my goal is to help you create a path to financial independence. First, I wanna get into the current state of Robinhood and the controversy that surrounds this brokerage. Robinhood has decided to go public and on July 29th, you'll be able to buy their stock. Robinhood will be listed on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol Hood. Robinhood has really become the go-to dominant trading platform for retail investors with over 22 and a half million funded accounts as of the second quarter of this year. And that's up from 18 million in quarter one. They also reported over $80 billion worth of customer assets. Robinhood has seen more and more attention as you can see. It has driven more traffic to its app and site than Webull, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, and E-Trade. Now there's a lot of drama surrounding Robinhood right now and they are certainly in the spotlight. They're dealing with lawsuits and fines and increased scrutiny from regulators and negative press all the way from Congress to Wall Street. It's gonna be interesting to see the outcome of this highly anticipated IPO. Robinhood is settling multiple lawsuits and has been hit with a $70 million fine from FINRA for misleading clients and not screening clients sufficiently, allowing inexperienced investors to make risky options and margin trades. They were also ordered to pay out over $12 million worth of restitution to clients as a result of the notorious technical failure and outages the platform faced in March of 2020. This is when the market had gone into correction and as the market began to go on a record rally, the platform failed, preventing account holders from capitalizing on the record market conditions. Then of course we have the epic Wall Street bets GameStop short squeeze where Robinhood froze trading on a basket of stocks, retail traders and followers of the Reddit page Wall Street bets were pumping up in defiance of the big hedge funds short positions on GameStop. Robinhood said they halted trading due to market volatility and unprecedented trade volume causing disruption to their platform. This high volume of trades on the so-called meme stocks forced the platform to freeze and restrict trades on these particular stocks, infuriating the Robinhood account holders that were followers of this Wall Street Bets Reddit movement, many of course losing out on a lot of potential profit. Skeptics believed Robinhood didn't halt trading for the best interest of their account holders. Rather, they possibly did it to help hedge funds and market makers they have associations with, and or they did it due to liquidity challenges from the unprecedented trade volume they were experiencing. Vlad Tenev, Robinhood's CEO, went on the record and publicly addressed the ordeal in multiple interviews, including an interesting exchange between Vlad and Elon Musk on Clubhouse, where Elon challenged Vlad on the suspicious circumstances of the ordeal. I'll link that video in the description below. Vlad denied rumors of restricting trades due to hedge fund and market maker influence, but did seem to indicate there were in fact some capital and liquidity challenges. And to be fair, at the time, there were other brokerages restricting trading on those stocks as well. So it wasn't just Robinhood. It just so happened that many of the Wall Street Bets Reddit users used Robinhood, so Robinhood really carried a brunt of the backlash. Robinhood has faced class action lawsuits for gamification or presenting their app in a manner that makes it seem like a game, attracting inexperienced traders. An example of this was their confetti animation that would display after making a trade, and they have since gotten rid of this feature. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger of Berkshire Hathaway have not shied away voicing their distaste of Robinhood. One complaint Warren and Charlie have with Robinhood is that it attracts uninformed beginner investors to risky options trading and margin trading. They liken Robinhood to a gambling platform, not a real investing platform. They have also been very critical of the real way Robinhood makes money, which is payment for order flow. And in 2019, FINRA fined Robinhood $1.25 million for their payment for order flow practices and not getting customers the best prices. Now let's get into the data that was disclosed in their S1. The S1 is the document a company files with the SEC prior to going public or offering their stock to the public. And within Robinhood's 200 plus page S1, they disclosed some very interesting numbers with respect to their financials and over 70 pages of identified potential risks to their company. I'll link their S1 and an article on how to read an S1 in the description below. And it's important to consider the financial fundamentals of the company because this information really gives us an idea as to the future growth potential and overall health of the company. In a sense, it helps conceptualize the value of the stock. 
The prospectus revealed that big banks Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, and JP Morgan are the lead underwriters for the deal. And as I mentioned before, they have over 22.5 million funded accounts, which is up 4 million since Q1 this year. And here's a look at their account growth since the company's inception. Their growth has been increasing quite a bit since they started the company, and given the meme stock and crypto craze, it has increased significantly in the last year. In 2020, Robinhood reported total revenue of $959 million, a 245% increase from 2019's $278 million, so a substantial increase in revenue. They also turned a profit in 2020 of a little over $7 million, which is significant because they reported a loss of over $100 million in 2019. And many companies that IPO aren't profitable prior to their IPO, so Robinhood definitely has some traction. In Q1 of 2021, they reported $520 million in revenue, meaning in one quarter, they made more than half the revenue from the entire year before. This is massive growth. If the pace is kept up, it would put them at around $2 billion in revenue for 2021, which is just crazy. Although they brought in a significant revenue in Q1, they did report a loss of $1.4 billion, which was a result of their liquidity issues and subsequent fundraising associated with the March meme stock crisis. And as per their updated prospectus, Robinhood estimates second quarter 2021 revenue between $546 million and $574 million. This would be a 129% increase from the $244 million in the second quarter of 2020. However, the company estimates a net income loss between $537 million and $487 million for Q2. They attribute this loss to trading seasonality, but Nevertheless, they are showing substantial growth. Their S1 also disclosed that although their app is primarily used for trading stocks, 17% of the company's revenue comes from cryptocurrency trading and a majority of that crypto revenue coming from Dogecoin transactions. The biggest revenue stream for the company comes from options trading, bringing in 197 million of its 522 million total Q1 revenue. So to compare, regular stock trades brought in 133 million and crypto trades brought in 87 million. To me, this is significant because Robinhood also reported that 50% of their account holders are first time investors, meaning there are many inexperienced people trying their luck with more advanced trading, which is potentially dangerous and more so because Robinhood didn't initially provide proper financial educational resources and customer support options for its account holders. This issue was part of that $70 million FINRA fine I mentioned earlier. So if you're short term trading or speculating with little to no knowledge of investing, you're essentially gambling. So in this sense, I can see merit in Buffett and Munger's perspective. Robinhood also disclosed they do in fact make a majority of their money from payment for order flow, which of course is a controversial way of making money on the execution of trades, a practice that they have been fined for and beyond Buffett and Munger, many others don't like. And it's actually currently being reviewed by the SEC. Also important to note, and to be fair, they aren't the only ones doing this. I believe Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Webull, and M1 Finance also use payment for order flow. But Robinhood essentially pioneered this method in order to offer free trading or zero commission trading. Their S1 disclosed 80% of their revenue comes from payment for order flow on options trades, standard stocks, and crypto trades. The remaining revenue they bring in comes from interest earned on margin and money made from their subscription service, Robinhood Gold. The valuation of Robinhood is expected to be at $35 billion, putting an expected share price between $38 and $42. And as I mentioned before, the company filed over 70 pages of potential risks it faces, and of significance, they reported that there's still a risk of platform outages. They mentioned the possibility of not being able to maintain the customer base they gained in 2020, and also that Dogecoin could be a problem, mentioning if Doge crashed, it would significantly affect them, being that a majority of their crypto revenue is from Doge. It was noted that increased regulation is a risk and that it's likely they'll face more scrutiny from regulators. Another risk they disclosed I thought was interesting was a risk related to being hacked and losing customers' crypto assets. They said if they're unable to access their customers' crypto keys, their reputation and business could be harmed. This is one of the biggest complaints of people that hold crypto on the Robinhood platform. The fact that the individual does not possess the keys to their crypto in a digital wallet like most other crypto brokers. So if you hold crypto in Robinhood, you're relying on Robinhood to safeguard that crypto for you. I hope they invest in a means to improve that deficiency. Overall, definitely not all bad news. 
They have turned a profit and the revenue is growing like crazy for now. The question is, can they sustain it, make improvements, and keep up with the demand? So will I be investing in Robinhood when they IPO? No. I'm not a fan of investing in IPOs. I think they're unpredictable and I just prefer investing with more certainty. It seems that recently a new stock will IPO, the price skyrockets way beyond its fair value and then gets sold off to levels below what many bought in at and your timing has to be perfect not to get burned. That inherent volatility isn't for me. I also don't really like the fact that the majority of Robinhood's revenue is coming from short-term traders trading options, meme stocks, and crypto like Doge. I question the reliability and sustainability of this momentum. Robinhood themselves have warned the trading frenzy is slowing down, meaning the biggest source of their revenue, options and crypto, is slowing down. I do acknowledge that there is a lot of upside potential when you get in on a company early, but in this case, for me personally, it's just not for me. For those reasons, I'm out. And just because I'm not investing in the IPO doesn't mean I dislike Robinhood. I have a Robinhood account and it serves my basic investing requirements just fine for now. They've made improvements to their platform over the past few years and I'm looking forward to seeing what changes or upgrades the platform will implement in the near future with all the new capital coming in from new investors. That's my take on the Robinhood IPO. Thank you for watching. Will you be buying Robinhood stock? Comment down below. And if you got value out of this, please like and subscribe. And if you know someone who could get value out of this video as well, please share it with them. My next video will be a YouTube short video and I'll be showing all the stock purchases I made in the month of July. And that's something that I'll be doing every month going forward. My next full video will be over dividend investing. I'll see you then.